How I cured procrastination in wholesaling real estate. Guys, it's Rick Ginn, and I've been wholesaling for 20 plus years, and I know a thing or two about procrastination, and I wanna give you four simple techniques so you can not only avoid procrastination, but wipe it out completely. But before I get into it, do me a favor, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can continue to receive videos just like this on wholesaling. So procrastination, we all know what it is. I don't even know why I have to spit it out. It's basically basically putting off something you need to do. That's my simplistic bottom line definition. And the reason why people do procrastination is they're trying to avoid something. And the reality is more you avoid something, the worse it comes. So the best thing you can do is just tackle it head on. And a lot of procrastination is basically a result of an expectation and then an outcome. And a lot of times if expectation and outcome are very far away, let me give an example. Like if I heat up my dinner, I know it's going to be ready like in a minute or two if I stick it in a microwave. I have a high expectation I'm going to have a positive outcome. Now, if I'm in wholesaling and I'm just starting marketing, pulling my list, I feel like the outcome might be a long way away. And since I don't get that instant rush, a lot of times procrastination will come in to delay it, come up with excuses because my expectation doesn't really believe the outcome is going to come anytime soon. So I create this thing called procrastination to put it off. Procrastination is one of the worst things you can do in wholesaling. And honestly, it makes you no money and it will drive you out of the business. So what I want to share with you are four four simple techniques that will help you avoid procrastination in any wholesaling things you do. So let's go through them step by step. So step number one is simple, yet everybody does it. So to avoid procrastination, we are trying to create long-term gains in wholesaling. Remember, I'm teaching you to run a marathon, not a sprint. Anybody can do this for a year or two. If you truly want to stay in wholesaling, you've got to figure out how to put in the long-term effort. You see, the short-term effort, which I'm going to go over you right now, is basically all those impulsive things. So you guys probably open your email, you probably open your social media, and you get bombarded with crap. And it all looks perfect. Hey, let me show you how leads get in your box, just like that. And then and you take the techniques me and Zach taught you at freewholesaling.com and you start shortcutting it and you think you can pay your way and get leads faster, get things done easier, and it just drives you crazy. In fact, if you're the impulsive type of person buys the latest, greatest product, you're looking at what we call the shiny object syndrome, you have to do that for the rest of your life because I've been doing this, I'm on 21 years now, it never stops. Since 2003, I have seen everything thrown at me in wholesaling and you have to avoid this. This is your short-term gratification and you have to go, listen, I'm in this for the long-term. This short-term stuff, I'm going to be on the hamster wheel forever if I do it. So stop being impulsive. Stop buying things that the pitch sounds so good, but the product really has no legs. And unfortunately, that's probably 80, 90% of the crap out there in wholesaling right now. Stop buying this stuff. Not only are you wasting your money, but it is a huge time suck. And if you want to learn how to be a marathon runner and not a sprinter, you have to delay gratification. You have to look at it long term. When you buy the shiny object syndromes, it's all short term gratification and it rarely ever works. So just stop doing it. Which leads us to technique number two, which is basically long term gratification. So to truly get what you want out of wholesaling, financial freedom, freedom of your time, freedom to work for who you want and work with who you want to is you have to delay gratification. There is no other way to do it because it's not going to be instant success. So how do I do that? I have to focus on the outcome, basically focus on the reward of wholesaling. I'm going to get freedom on my time. I'm going to be my own boss. I control my destiny. I control my money and I I have the time to spend with my family and my friends. See, you have to have a belief that's so strong and the conviction to support it to get you through the delayed gratification. Long-term delay is not easy. And when you're constantly bombarded with impulsive like marketing ideas, especially in wholesaling, it is designed to distract you and take your money. So technique number two, focus on the reward. That's it. Like if you truly want to get where you want, and honestly, you can get there in less than a year. Some of you in two years, you'll be so financially free. You don't know what to do. Guys, you got to run a marathon in wholesaling. Stop doing the shiny object syndrome and focus on the reward. Delay your gratification and amazing things will happen in your life. You're going to have to trust me on this because I struggled with this for years. And I'm telling you, if you can grasp this concept, there's no reason you'll ever procrastinate in wholesaling because you want to get to the finish line because you're so excited to get 
get there. But watch out. There are gurus. There are coaches. Everybody who wants to tell you the latest, greatest thing in wholesaling. Why compete with wholesalers? Take this shortcut. Guys, it's a trap. I'm sorry. It's the truth. It bothers me just as much as does you. Just don't fall for it because they have such a high failure rate. And honestly, they're just selling a coaching course. So long term, how do we do this? Focus on the reward. Technique number three is what I call time blocking. And this is something I learned actually quite a while ago and it works out really well. You see, I got in the scheduling. So first of all, if you don't have a calendar on your phone, you don't have a business. I'm sorry. You have to schedule your day out. Now I went from one extreme to the other. I didn't just schedule anything and then I scheduled everything. And I got to the point I was scheduling every 15 minutes of my day and it got unmanageable and I got miserable. And I've learned, I know I got ADHD and then how I manage it is I do time blocking. The human brain only has so much capacity to do real work in a time frame. So the reality, if somebody goes to work from nine to five, they say on average, a person, the most they put in is about two and a half hours to three hours of actual work in an eight hour day. Think about that. That's crazy. So if you think about time blocking, I like to set two hours. So if I'm going to be cold calling, I dedicate two hours. I put my phone on silent. I set it right there just in case of an emergency. Emergency, I shut my computer down and I just go on the dialer and I just, I do the task and I lock down and I get in a zone because I'm not going to let anything else distract me, especially someone like me with ADHD. I've got to lock it in. Once I do something, I commit to it. The progress is incredible. And nine times out of 10 guys, procrastination, it's the anxiety before you do it that takes you out. And the cure to procrastination is actually doing the task. So you don't get that awkward feeling. So try the time blocking. So typically I set two hours for cold calling. I set two hours for appointment setting. And then sometimes I set two hours for follow-ups and then I'll go out and gather lists, go on appointments and whatever I do. Two hours works perfectly for me. Three hours is too long and an hour, hour and a half is not enough time. And then what that does. So if I set a time block from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., then you know, my next one, I'm usually setting at least one hour back. Why? Sometimes I'm running late. You got to set in a doctor's office when they make you wait. Sometimes you have to take phone calls. Sometimes you have to deal with your kids. So if you go from eight to 10 and then may from from 11 to one, and then you go from like three to five, that gives you time to return phone calls, grab a bite to eat. And when stuff pops up in the day, but you're still in control of your day, guys, time blocking is extremely valuable. And it will also create discipline for you. So you are consistently doing everything at the same time every day. So you can split up your marketing, you're talking with sellers and your dispositions, and you can come up with a time allotment so you can schedule. Remember in the beginning of wholesaling, everything takes you a lot longer, but as long as you're consistent on that time blocking, you can get stuff done. Remember everything I'm teaching you is so you have tools to avoid procrastination because once you get in that procrastination mode, things don't get done. So that's why I like time blocking because either I can sit here and stare at the floor for two hours or I can just make my phone calls. I eliminate all my choices so I don't fall into the short-term temptation of doing impulsive stuff. And at the end of the day, I just get more done. And after five, six, seven days of you doing this, you'll find you're much more productive. You don't put stuff off as much because when you put off procrastination, it just piles your plate up worse. Let's knock it down. Guys, time blocking, incredible. The last technique I'm teaching you is just what I call breaking down a task. And it's exactly what it sounds. Sometimes we get tasks and they seem absolutely overwhelming and just like, how am I going to tackle this? Well, instead of looking at the whole project, just break down the pieces that you can do today to make progress for you reaching your goal. So if I'm just getting started, I'm a new wholesaler. I'm like, man, I got to get leads. Like, how do I get this started? You don't know every technique. You've gone through the marketing section at freewholesaling.com by now, and you figured, hey, listen, I need, just need to go out and get some driving for dollar leads. That's great because it takes a lot of experience and you can take action and you're not going to sit around and do the analysis, the paralysis by analysis, because you're actually going to do something. So, okay, well, how do I do? I've never done it before. Well, I know what to look for. I'm looking for distressed houses, overgrown grass, boarded up windows, blue tarps. So you've already identified the area and then you write down, I want to get 200 leads. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get 200 leads. Now, day one, maybe we go out and we get a hundred leads. Day two, we go out and get another 100 in leads. And then the third day, I'm going to take those leads, put them in my spreadsheets, whatever tools you're using, maybe you're using dmzack.com, whatever it is. And then basically you have to skip trace that material. Now, dmzack.com is a wonderful place to do it. Once you skip tracing it, which is just looking up the contact information for these sellers, and then you go, oh my God, I'm a new wholesaler. How do I contact these people? One person at a time. It's that simple. You got 200 leads. Let's break it up over three days. Day one, I'm going to call 70. Day two, I'm going to call 
call 70, day three, I'm gonna call 60. It's that simple. You see, if I try to call $200 all in one shot, I might get distracted or think it's gonna take me eight to 10 hours and you're probably not gonna last. So I would break it down and then every time you get a task, especially when you start a whole thing, make progress. You're never gonna get it perfect. But by doing nothing, that is a choice. It's called procrastination and it leads to nowhere. So if you don't know what to do, just simplify it. If you're working on like a huge list, just break it down. What am I gonna do today to attack this list? And by breaking down the task and making them manageable, you can progress. In one week, you can do amazing things on one big giant task. And so many guys try to take it down in a day or two. You're better off spreading it over five or seven days and getting to the point and having the highest quality contact rate with your sellers. Guys, at the end of the day, procrastination is just the fear of the unknown outcome. And so to avoid a negative impact of maybe the outcome not working, you just procrastinate. And honestly, the faster you get through the task and get the outcome, you can get your data loop. You'll get feedback. You find out what works and you can do it more. You can find out what doesn't work and you can do it less. But if you don't get into that data feed loop, you can't make progress. And if you're not making progress, you're most likely procrastinating and it is a road to nowhere. I don't want you to procrastinate. And I've learned in my 20 plus years of wholesaling, the best cure to procrastination is just diving in and getting the job started. So take these four techniques and break it down. Let me know in the comments which one you guys are using to help make your wholesaling more manageable so you don't get stuck in the analysis paralysis, also known as procrastination. And as usual, guys, if you got value from this video, do me a favor, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. This is Rick Ken. I'll see you in the next video.